Wellens syndrome, weak to live. So why do I say that? What is Wellens syndrome? It's an abnormal narrowing of the left anterior descending artery of the heart. Uh, this is commonly called the widow maker when this is infarcted, if you choose to use that terminology. I've explained why I dislike it in a previous video. Why is it important to recognize Wellens syndrome? It's that usually within the, the onset of these episodes of chest pain where you may get called to or where they may be seen in the ED, usually within about a week, they will have a left anterior descending MI. So what exactly is this, this artery that's narrowed? You can see on the slide, it's the left anterior descending. So this is a pretty good uh, artery here. <clears throat> it supplies a huge amount of the septal wall. It can wrap around to the bottom of the heart and come back up on the posterior side. It is a, a large amount of blood supply not just to both sides of the heart, but also to the conduction system, which runs it. So what are the characteristics of Wellens syndrome where we can find this on somebody? Well, usually they'll have transient chest pain, which a lot of us just chalk up to angina. So that's not normally something that sticks out to us. They may show ST elevation during the episodes of chest pain. So you may very well be transporting a patient who shows ST elevation in the uh, left anterior descending leads, which is a V1, V2, V3, V4. And then it may disappear and go away. And it may show nothing when pain-free. So you may get called to chest pain, and then the chest pain is eased by the time you get there, and then your ECG doesn't show really anything. Or more often than not, what you'll see is a specific ECG pattern, which will help you identify it as well in syndrome. And this is how we catch it. This is how we know what it is. So there's two types before we get into what we'll see. There's type A. 75% of cases are going to be type A. They're going to be inverted deep T waves and lead V2 and V3. Type B, which will be one in four cases, is going to have biphasic T waves. And I've got an ECG with both of those on here. So in Wellens type A, as you can see on the screen, leads V2 and V3. You have these very deep, very prominent T waves. All right. And this is uh, not something that's very natural for the progression of the QRS through the precordial leads, as you can see here, if you're familiar with that. And let's move on to type B, which you can see right here. These T waves, uh, particularly in V2 and V3, they are biphasic. So they are both negative and positive. And this may even present or look like a minimal amount of ST elevation. The thing is, the ST elevation will be less than 2 millimeters in those precordial leads, so it won't meet STEMI criteria. But when you see this on an ECG pattern in a patient who's had transient chest pain, you're looking at someone who's probably going to have an MI within a week. That's what they average. They're going to have a widow maker within a week. So these are the people that you want to talk into going to the hospital if they uh, are, you know, are reluctant. Because how many times do you get called out where people say, you know, I'm having chest pain, and then you get there and everything's all right, and they don't want to go. Well, when you recognize a pattern like this, uh, it can happen as early as tomorrow. It can happen as late as a few weeks from now. But they are definitely going to have an MI in the left anterior descending because that artery is narrow. It's stenotic, and it's going to require some kind of intervention. The bad part is with these MIs that, that come from that artery being blocked, they usually respond pretty poorly to medical management. Uh, the stent is what fixes these people. So the balloon is really what's going to make the difference in life and death in these people. The medical management is usually pretty difficult in keeping them alive and keeping damage uh, from happening to the heart during transport. All right, there you go. Get out and practice.